Greeting everybody. This is our uh, uh, guest talk from uh, Guillaume Gardet uh, from uh, ARM. Guillaume, please, uh, the floor is yours. Hi, everybody. Um, we will talk uh, today about uh, enablement of ARM V8.x features, so 64 bit uh, flavors of ARM uh, processor. So the agenda for today um, will be first uh, an introduction uh, of myself. Um, then I will show you um, how ARM enables new features um, in upstream. And then uh, most of the talk will be about um, uh, details on some features uh, from ambi.x architectural uh, extensions. And, and at the end, we will have time to, to have questions, but um, feel free to, to interrupt me uh, during the talk to, to ask your, your question, and I will try to, to answer them. So who am I? Um, I'm Guillaume Gardet. I'm a member of the OpenSUSE community uh, for years now. Um, and since about two years, I'm an uh, engineer at ARM, uh, part of the distro team uh, inside the open source software group. And I'm dedicated to SUSE and OpenSUSE. I'm also a member of the OpenSUSE release team. Um, and I take care of ARM architectures, uh, which means um, IR64. So this is ARMv8. Uh, this is my main focus. But I also take care about uh, ARMv7. Uh, and also a little bit on the older ARM v6. Now I will show you how ARM enables new features uh, upstream. So here you have um, a nice view of uh, every extensions of uh, ARM v8.x architecture. So you have the base with V8.0, which was the first release. And then we have uh, 8.1, which added some few features. Um, I will not detail all the features, um, but uh, I will give some information about the features in bold, such as um, LSE, PHE, or PAN. Uh, and then you have uh, 8.2, uh, which adds even more extensions, as you can see. Uh, I, the same for 8.3, 8.4, and so on. So currently, most of hardware um, out are 8.0 uh, system on chips, but you also have 8.1 machines and also 8.2. And coming next year, um, you will have 8.3. Um, machine. Here you can also uh, see uh, different colors uh, with different meanings and it's about kernel enablement uh, in upstream. So you can see that um, most of the features are enabled or are nearly enabled until 8.5 whereas uh, as I told you we are just about to, to get 8.3 hardware. So this is because um, ARM uh, tries to get uh, new features upstream as soon as possible, even before silicon is available. Uh, that way, when you, you get your hardware, um, you're pretty sure to, to have a, a good support uh, from software. So the top priority uh, inside ARM uh, to work on upstream are the Linux kernel and toolchain. But we also take care um, about user space, user space software performance uh, updates. Um, for example, for TensorFlow or other user space software. But as I told you, we try to enable uh, things before silicon is available. So we cannot test on silicon, on real hardware. 
Um, so most of our tests are on models, uh, which are kind of emulators, um, or also on FPGA. But as soon as silicon uh, is available, uh, we also try to, to test um, on the real hardware to, to make sure uh, everything is okay and performance are, are great. On the, the features I show you on the previous slides, um, some are mandatory and some are optional. So you get a, a very big difference uh, between hardware. Um, you can have um, a zero hardware with no additional features. You can have uh, an A.3 uh, hardware but with not uh, all the features. So it's it can be very challenging to, to deal with uh, this hardware heterogeneity. Um, newer optional features are very attractive uh, um, regarding performances or security. Um, but um, from a distro point of view, we need to, to keep the compatibility with older hardware. So it's not easy, or always easy to, to enable uh, new features um, in uh, Linux distribution. We have few uh, solutions uh, to enable the, the new features. Um, on older hardware, uh, you have a number of um, instructions and some instructions are uh, in the knob space um, so this is a space where uh, instruction just does uh, nothing. This is a knob. Um, that way, uh, in future hardware, we can use uh, this space to add new uh, instructions. Um, and we can, for example, uh, for pointer authentication, uh, from, for num v8.0, uh, the instruction used for pointer authentication is in the knob space, so nothing will be done with this, this instruction. But for MVI.3 hardware, um, it will do uh, it will do, uh, do something uh, regarding pointer authentication. So this is very convenient um, for backward compatibility, and it's um, used uh, quite often uh, on the ARM space. But it's not always uh, usable. For example, for LSE Atomics, uh, we need to do a runtime detection uh, and choose uh, a path, uh, either a legacy uh, for MV8.0, for example, and, and then uh, another run for LSE Atomics enabled hardware. Uh, sorry, Guillaume, Whoa, yes. one second, if I can interrupt you. We have a question from the chat. Uh, Claudio is asking the following. I'm going to read it for the recording. With all these features available, how is a common base for servers identified? Could you speak a bit about SBSA and SBBR and ARM system ready SR, formerly server ready, and how they fit in this picture, if at all? Can they be used as a support target when looking at ARM V8? as a server platform? So SBSA and SBBR are um, a different topic. Um, it's more um, about um, uh, booting and um, uh, minimum uh, to services to support uh, on the ARM space. So it's quite different uh, from the, these features. Does it answer the, the question, Claudio? Okay, we can speak uh, more about it uh, at the end of, of the talk if you want. I, I wanted to integrate the question with the, my own curiosity, um, building on the question by, by Claudio. Um, you. As, a, as an operating system developer, you can only rely on uh, the mandatory 
part of the specification. Is that correct? Uh, as a base, yes. Um, but for example, for point authentication, you could add new instruction in your uh, executor, executable, new binaries. Um, and if the new instruction is part of the noise knob space of the previous uh, hardware, it will just does nothing for older hardwares, but uh, it will be it will enable new features on newer hardware. hardware. Yes, thank you. And when it's not possible to use the knob space, you go on runtime detection to to know if your hardware supports or not um, those new features. So this is the way we we do we we use it for LSE Atomics, for example. And a third solution would be to to have multiple packages um, and with multiple uh, optimization for different hardware, but uh, it's avoided uh, most of the time because we you will end up with um, a huge number of different packages. So it's not um, really great from a, a distro point of view. Uh, on the OpenSUSE wiki, uh, there is a page um, uh, called ARM Architecture Support, uh, where you can find some information about those features and their enablement in uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and OpenSUSE Leap. On this wiki page, uh, on the top, there is three links um, to ARM website, uh, which is very useful to know which features is in which upstream version. So you have a page for GNU toolchain. So if you want uh, to know uh, in which version we added um, LSE Atomics, for example, you will have the information. You have the same for LLVM toolchain and uh, also for the kernel. So this is very useful if you want to know if your current kernel uh, will support uh, one features or another. Now I will give you some uh, information about some features uh, from mva.x architectural extensions. So I will begin with um, PAN. Uh, which stands for Privileged Access Never. This is a security mechanism um, against possible software attacks. Uh, it prevents uh, the kernel or hypervisor from accessing user space. So this is uh, exception level zero, um, memory uh, directly. Uh, this option will cause um, any unprotected memory access uh, to fail with a permission fault. And this feature, which is available only on A.1 and later, um, is detect detected at runtime, and uh, it's enabled in the kernel since 4.3. And with armvi.2 hardware, um, it is replaced by uh, armvi.2 UAO, which means uh, user access override which is also detected at runtime and available since kernel 4.6. So you can see the kernel version are quite old for now, and it's enabled for, for pretty much all the, um, the kernel we, have, we are running at the moment. Another one is LSC Atomics. So LSC stands for a large system extension. Uh, the atomic instructions can be used as an alternative to older load. Yep. Sorry, can I have a question to the previous one still? So I yes, think sure. if I understand it correctly, that's basically equivalent of SMAP on, on Intel, right? SMAP. Um, uh, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, okay. Yeah, but. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it seems so. So basically, my question is, how does it deal with with the direct mapping? So this this prevents uh, the access when going through through the regular mapping, right? But how does it deal with the with the kernel the, with the direct mapping in the kernel? Thanks. Um, sorry, I don't know um, the, the answer to this question. Um, I can 
try to, to find out and come back to you later. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I can see a question from Andreas. I know that the feature names have been renamed to FitPan, FitURL, etc. Yes, uh, since a few weeks, um, all the feature names uh, have been renamed uh, on the ARM website, indeed. Uh, the main reason is uh, because some uh, new features added, for example, in 8.5 um, are retrofitted, uh, means uh, backported to 8.2 or 8.3. So you can get some 8.5 features in 8.2 or 8.3 hardware uh, if they, they use uh, the latest revision. So go back to LSC Atomics, uh, so large system extensions Atomics. So the Atomic instruction can be used as uh, an alternative to the load exclusive and store exclusive instruction from ARMv8.0 to improve the implementation of uh, atomic memory updates in very large system. So to enable it, we can use a plus LSC option in uh, dash MR uh, option in GCC, but that will break uh, non-LSC systems. So it's a no-go for a distribution uh, point of view. Um, but with GCC 9.3.1 uh, and later, you can enable out of line atomics with uh, the option dash M outline atomics that will choose the correct pass at, at runtime. And with GCC 10, um, it's even better because uh, this option is enabled by default. And uh, that's why Tumbleweed have it enabled uh, automatically since snapshot um, 0602 from this year. And to make sure all is fine, um, uh, this is tested in OpenQA with KMU on LSE enabled hardware, uh, which includes uh, the following machine, a Sandor X2, uh, N1 SDP, and a Graviton 2. And this is tested also on non-LSE hardware to make sure uh, the backward compatibility is not broken. Another interesting one is uh, still A.1 uh, VHE. Uh, this is virtualization host extensions. Um, it enables simpler support for type 2 hypervisor. Uh, it allows the kernel to directly run at EL2, uh, exception level 2, and significantly reduce the number of system registers shared between host and guest. And it's just reducing the overhead uh, of the virtualization. So by avoiding a lot of context switching, uh, we increase performance. And this feature is detected on boot by the kernel, and this is available since kernel 4.6. So again, uh, a quite old uh, kernel. Another one is A.2 SPE, uh, which means st statistical profiling extension. Um, this is an extension used by a uh, perf tool uh, and it provides a periodic sampling of operation uh, in the CPU, CPU pipeline and uh, reports this via the, the perf aux interface. So since kernel 4.14, um, we have it uh, enabled with device 3. And for ICPI, uh, it's since kernel 4.3. And um, KVM, KVM enablement is uh, ongoing work uh, at the moment. Then we have uh, nested virtualization. So we have um, a basic version in 8.3 and an enhanced uh, version in 8.4. Um, so the nested virtualization is the ability to run a guest inside the guest. Uh, while still using hardware acceleration. So it's well known on Intel and AMD, but until uh, A.3 or A.4 in ARM, uh, it was non-existent at all. 
currently patches are not upstream yet. Uh, we just upstream a uh, few pre nested vert cleanup patches. Uh, and so it's still work in progress. In 8.3, we have a pointer authentication. So you can find POT or PAC uh, as a name. It's uh, the, exactly the same as pointer authentication. Uh, These instructions uh, allow to sign and authenticate pointers against secret keys um, to mitigate uh, return oriented programming attacks and other potential buffer over and style attacks. So we, we use um, two instructions from the NOP space again. So it's safe to enable it uh, in a distro point of view. It's a pack IASP and hot IASP. Um, starting with 8.3 hardware, uh, we could use a new instruction, red AA, which is a combination of hot uh, IASP and Right, but if you if you use it, uh, it will break um, backward compatibility. So again, we just use the the two previous one. So here is an example. Uh, if you enable uh, pointer authentication, you will add um, the first uh, instruction back IASP, the beginning of your function, and at the end, just before the return, you will add the hot IASP. And with those two instructions, you sign um, a pointer, and then before returning, you you check it, you authenticate it. So if you can see, if you run on MV8.0, uh, which is not supporting pointer authentication, you just add a nope uh, instruction and another nope instruction. So you will lose a little bit of performance, but it will not break. Uh, running those uh, binaries. If you want more details about pointer authentication, um, here is a link uh, to a YouTube video from Steve Kapper, um, one of my colleagues, uh, presenting uh, pointer authentication at SUSE Lab uh, last year. User space support has been added in kernel 4.2. 21, um, but uh, SUSE and open SUSE user space is not built with uh, the matching GCC flag yet uh, because it requires GCC 10.2 and LFUTILS 0.181. So this is just in um, tumbleweed since a few days or weeks, and we didn't uh, enable it yet. But I will tell you more uh, later. Kernel support, so this is uh, to use pointer authentication not on the user space, but in kernel. Um, the support has been added in 5.7. And we have enhancements, uh, which is pointer authentication 2 and fault pack. Uh, this, is, this has been added in kernel 5.10. So Tumbleweed have the in kernel support uh, since June, and uh, user space enablement uh, will come uh, in the next uh, days, uh, I hope. Another instruction. Yep. So, um, are you planning to just um, set those GCC options in the project config for um, ARG64, or are you planning to do some um, branch project first to see whether, like, all the JITs and so on are already able to cope with that? I will have a word uh, a little bit later about it. Okay. So, another one uh, which is uh, interesting is branch target identifier uh, from 8.5. Um, it's also called uh, landing pads uh, sometimes, uh, and it helps to protect against uh, jump-oriented programming attacks. Uh, the way it works, it's, it allows indirect branches to only target a landing pad instruction. 
which is uh, PTI. So in this uh, example, uh, you have a branch, and if you land on the BTI instruction, all is fine. If you branch and you land in another instruction, there will be uh, a fault. Uh, user space and kernel support have been added in kernel 5.8. And uh, for Tumbleweed, uh, kernel support, uh, it's since um, 0.8.21, so end of August. Uh, this year. And user space enablement is ongoing and will be enabled at the same time as uh, pointer authentication. Again, um, BTI instructions are part of the knob space, so this is uh, safe to enable, to, to not break uh, backward compatibility. And um, support for landing pads is enabled for each page uh, using a new bit, which is a GP bit. And this allows a mix of BTI protected code and legacy code, which is quite inter inter interesting from a, a distro point of view. Here um, I took. Um, some numbers uh, from this uh, document. Uh, this is providing protection for complex software, uh, PDF uh, from ARM website. And it's an example of uh, advantages of PAC and BTI on GDPC. So you can see that um, if you enable PAC and BTI, uh, you increase the code by um, about 3% but you reduce the number of um, gadgets, uh, possible attacks, by more than uh, 97%. So here you can see, uh, if you enable only pack, you would decrease the number of possible attacks. If, it's, if you enable only BTI, it's even more, and if you enable both, it's really, really interesting. And so here is um, a little word for your on your question, Andreas, about pointer authentication and BTI enablement in OpenSUSE. So uh, we will enable it uh, in the next days in OpenSUSE Tumbleweed by adding the dash M branch protection equals standard flag, which and en which enable both pointer authentic authentication and BTI. This is tested uh, since a few weeks already in, um, in projects, in separate projects. So we have the ring zero uh, packages and ring one packages uh, in those two uh, projects. And both are rebuilding properly uh, with uh, pointer authentication. And I created another project uh, for additional packages and also um, a Justinus OS image to, to test it in OpenQA. Um, to test it in OpenQA, uh, as we do not have uh, hardware yet, uh, we need to use KMU with a dash CPU max option and without KVM, uh, which means you will get very slow performances um, without KVM. Also, you will need KMU uh, 4.0 or later to, to get um, pointer authentication and BTI emulation. So there is a question on the chat. Are there noticeable performance impacts by this new instruction to be expected? So yes, you will have um, a little bit, uh, in, a lit very little impact because you had new uh, instructions. Um, so you will lose time. Uh, but um, I do not expect big impacts uh, on the performances. So you will lose a little bit on performances, but you will get uh, a very good um, protection uh, on the security side. So 
one broker um, to, to enable it in OpenSUSE Tumbleweed uh, was uh, the main um, machine uh, run um, OpenSUSE Lib 15.1, and it was using KMU uh, 3. Dot, uh, something, and it was not enough to, to test it. Um, this is going to be updated soon and we can we will uh, be able to to activate uh, the right flag another one is uh, mvi.4 um, mpar which is memory partitioning and monitoring uh, it allows the sysadmin to divide and monitor the performance of the memory system between software um, there is uh, something similar on x86. So uh, we will reuse the interface, which is a race control interface. Um, the problem is it's not uh, designed to be portable. So we start with cleanup patches, uh, which are already queued for 5.10. And then there, there will be some follow-up patches, uh, which are still a work in progress. Um, I added the link if you want to have a look. And uh, I also added uh, a little table to compare the current uh, REST control interface um, and the ARM and PAM controls. So you can see some of them are available already on the REST control interface, and some uh, features uh, will need to, to extend uh, this tool. The system description, so on device tree and ACPI bindings, um, is ongoing. Um, ACPI for MPAM spec is not in the final version. Uh, it's only beta, uh, but uh, it will be finalized uh, this month. Once the, uh, the final version will be released, patches will be rebased uh, update, uh, against the updated spec. And uh, it will be done for SCPI first, and device three will be derived uh, accordingly. The enablement plan plans are um, the REST control rework uh, are expected to, to continue throughout um, the rest of this year. And for next year, um, ARM64 specific enablement uh, will start. In 8.4, we have a question one again. Yes. So we've had um, some uh, talks here at LabsConf about the uh, memory control groups. Um, and I just wonder, this uh, REST CGRL tool that you were mentioning here, does that use C groups underneath, or is that a completely separate mechanism? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I will check, and we'll get back to you uh, later. So then we have A.5 random number generator, RNG. Uh, it's high bandwidth, uh, cryptographically secure hardware, RNG. Uh, so it, this is quite interesting as well. Um, we have a uh, hardware capability exposure um, to be used by user space, but it, it can also be used um, to seed um, kernel address space uh, layer randomization or CRNG. And it's enabled in kernel 5.6 um, with uh, arch random uh, config. Another interesting one is uh, memory tagging extensions, MTE. Uh, it's also named uh, memory coloring sometimes. Um, and it implements uh, lock and key uh, access to, to memory. Thanks, Giovanni. Um, so you can lock uh, uh, memory space. And when you want to access it, you will need to provide a key. If the key matches the lock, the access is permitted. So for example, this region A, you have a tag, which is 9. 
if you want to access this region, you should provide the same tag, and that's fine. Again, for region B, the tag is two. So if you provide tag two, that's fine. But if you provide tag nine, then uh, there is a fault. So if the, the key and the lock does not match, uh, you have two modes um, of error reporting. You have the precise mode, uh, and then uh, an exception, like a page fault, uh, is, uh, is thrown. And you have in precise mode, uh, which is faster, and just logs uh, that an error occurred. Uh, user space heap tagging enablement is ongoing. Uh, should be in 5.11. Um, and in kernel heap tagging and KVM guest enablement are on, ongoing as well. So it's not yet upstream, but uh, it's coming. Here I've listed um, a few last upstream kernel releases uh, with uh, some interesting um, updates uh, for ARM. So on A.6, uh, we had the RNG, we already seen, but um, also a few hardware capabilities. Um, on A.7, uh, we had pointer authentication in kernel support. We also have AMU and PMU, uh, which are activity monitor and performance monitor, uh, which are mostly used by Perf tool. Um, one thing which is important as well in this kernel is um, regarding KVM. Uh, we have support for JIC version 4.1. And uh, also we have the removal of 32-bit host uh, in this kernel. So starting from kernel 5.7, you cannot use anymore your v 7 board um, as a host to, to run KMU with KVM. In kernel 5.8, uh, which is a current open SUSE tumbleweed, um, we have uh, BTY uh, enabled, so support for user space and in kernel. And on KVM, we have uh, pre nested virtualization uh, patches. In 5.9, uh, which is just around the corner, um, we have a um, few interesting things, such as in KVM, uh, so further pre-nested virtualization patches, but uh, pointer authentication, uh, which is now, which will be available for guests uh, on on VHC host. And for 5.10, uh, it's just prediction, but uh, it's queued in next, so it should make it. We have pointer authentication two and fault pack. Uh, so this, those two are pointer authentication enhancements uh, introduced in MVI.6, uh, but uh, retrofitted to A.3. And we also will have um, the first chunk of uh, race control cleanup patches. Uh, so this is in preparation for MPAM. And if you want to go further, um, again, uh, there is an um, OpenSUSE wiki page on ARM architecture support, which is uh, kept up to date. Um, we have um, this link um, to, to get uh, more information about uh, pointer authentication, branch target identifier, and uh, memory tagging extension. So, it's a very good uh, PDF to, to read. And um, thanks, Giovanni. You also have um, the YouTube video uh, about pointer authentication from Steve Kapper uh, from Suze Labs last, last year. And um, the whole uh, ARM documentation uh, is available uh, from developer.arm.com slash documentation, documentation. And if you are looking for something, um, it's definitely a, a good place to, to start with.
and we have uh, about five minutes uh, for questions. There are some. So if you have no questions. Um, yeah, there was yeah. a question from Claudio where I yeah. feel like he wanted to ask some extra details. Claudio, are you still interested? So Claudio is fine, apparently. I have a question sure. from uh, oops, uh, Andreas. Go ahead. I didn't really have Andreas, please. Whatever order is fine. Um, no, I just wanted to check, given that we're talking about a lot of features that um, people don't have hardware in their hands for. Um, you spoke about QMU in a couple places. So is this a uh, fixed setup that the OpenSUSE OpenQA instance will be running QMU in this emulation modes in a, or in modes suitable for uh, testing that all those features are actually working? Or is uh, this done manually? Currently, um, it's in, um, in OpenQA uh, for OpenSUSE but uh, not in the main uh, Tumbleweed uh, test. Uh, it's in the development uh, project. So, but um, I will move it uh, soon in the main uh, test suite. Does it answer the question? Yes, thanks. Giovanni, please. I didn't have a question. I just wanted to wrap up uh, this uh, gracious contribution by Guillaume. And um, as Guillaume said, if there are no further questions, I'm going to stop the recording. It seems like uh, this is the case. So thank you very much, Guillaume, for the interesting presentation. And thank you, everybody, for attending.